Welcome back to the channel, everyone, and thank you for tuning in today. Uh, we're looking here at the NASDAQ 100. I also will be looking at the E-mini futures. Um, I took a trade into the uh, overnight session, just one, one trade going along. But first and foremost, I want to thank everyone that is part of this community here on the YouTube channel as well over on the Discord community. If you're interested in joining the Discord, yes, it is free. Find the link down in the description portion of the video invite yourself in i appreciate that but this channel we pr primarily trade the index futures it doesn't matter if you trade the nasdaq the dow the es which is my go-to right now i've been doing more trading over on the nasdaq 100 futures just because of the movement um structure of the market this time of year things kind of slow down when it comes to volume uh on the uh, e-mini s p 500 so it will pick back up but that is my go-to market the es futures uh, i've been loving the nasdaq recently though but you know, it doesn't matter if you trade um, the indice futures or if you trade the currencies or commodities or um, energies. As long as you trade futures, you're more than welcome to join us, okay? I'm sure there are other individuals or traders that are part of this community that trade other than just, you know, the index futures or in indice futures. Um, that's just my go-to to markets. But what I'm trying to say is that it all surrounds here on this channel. We're talking about a strategy of using supply and demand. I've been showing that month after month day after day in so many videos you can see there's over 600 on hit, uh, videos here on the channel so i've been putting a lot of time and making a lot of content because i truly want to see people succeed um, within this business whether it's you making you know 200 dollars a day or you're making two two thousand dollars a day it doesn't matter okay we all have to start from somewhere whether you have a small account or a large size account it's all about building capital and and growth within the account okay a little bit each day compounds to make something larger okay so uh today like i said i'm going to be looking here again at the markets to see if we can get into a few trades it is friday uh we had news a short bit ago at 9 45 pm uh, um so you know i took one trade so far uh, as, I, as i mentioned right here this is a long entry uh back up to this area right here uh to fill in the imbalances that's the key thing about trading is knowing Whenever you get, or whatever the market, if you market your zone, say for instance, trading supply and demand, where there's a high volume, excuse me, not high volume, where there is a um, supply zone or demand zone, in this case, we're looking at demand areas because the market is, is pushing higher. We're going to look at the structure of the market yesterday. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. But I, I noticed that the tide changed yesterday towards the close where it started breaking or we started making um, higher highs and higher lows breaking back into or breaking through uh, minor areas or internal structure as the market moved move back to the upside, okay? I call it minor areas of structure because I like to look at the structure of the market within a session. Yes, I do look at, uh, you know, from a higher t t uh, standpoint, meaning the prior session, you know, just kind of look at the flow of the market when it comes to the structure. But we're looking at the uh, overall, we'll take a look at it now, the structure of the market, say from yesterday, right? We were we had a high here, okay? If you look at it prior to that, we're making higher highs and higher lows. So the structure was... Uh, bullish okay moving to the upside then we get a uh, started making lower lows and lower, lower highs to the downside here you see that we're making lower lows and lower highs to the downside here all right uh, so I started noticing that we took out yesterday's low okay that's a major sign or signal that we may be shifting to the downside and that helps me determine my directional bias whether I'm going to take a take, look for entries to go long or short then we started breaking uh, areas of structure to the downside from the prior session so that's an even um, you know, uh, a, a bigger sign that things are kind of shifting to a different direction. Instead of looking for longs, now looking for shorts. So this was yesterday's session here moving and making lower lows and lower highs. But yesterday, uh, towards the close, about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, we started making higher highs and higher lows back to the upside. Now, this is the structure of the market within that session. We started breaking areas of structure back to the upside as we started making these higher highs and higher lows. Minor areas of structure breaks back to the upside. So, what would I be looking for? Yes, you can look for definitely areas to go what, to go long, but be mindful of what the overall direction, uh, to what was going on, you know, um, into the, say, the uh, uh, Asian, to the London, to the U.S. session, where the market was making these lower lows and lower, lower highs and taking out structure to the downside. Turn. Now, that means that if the bigger picture is is to the downside then i want my emphasis would be more so looking for shorts right because the structure is to the downside okay now if we start breaking minor areas of structure back to the upside i'm not saying you can't look for longs you can definitely do so but keep in in mind the bigger picture is to look for shorts 
Until we start, and when we definitely start making or breaking through major areas of structure, which would be yesterday's high, for instance, if we broke that area there, then we would definitely be looking for uh, opportunities to look for, for loans, which means at that point we would have had, had a major structure break, okay? Uh, so then we close with breaking minor areas of structure to the upside. And going into the overnight session, we kept making higher highs and higher lows, breaking other areas of minor structure. So uh, I would, you know, definitely could be looking for longs, okay, because we were making higher highs and higher lows, breaking through areas of minor structure into the prior day session. And this is a major high resting up here at 16,884, okay? So with that said, is that if it breaks that, then that's a major area of, of structure that, that will be broken or taken out, okay? Uh, taken out. Uh, prior sessional highs and lows is something that you really want you want to really focus in on so it looks like we're climbing up there to possibly do so but we can reject just as well okay um so you're kind of in a uh middle standpoint or middle situation because we're breaking minor areas of structure back to the upside uh taking out structure areas within yesterday's trading session but we haven't really broken that major area of structure from yesterday's session or major area of a, a high right here from yesterday's session is what i'm trying to say so just be mindful um that there could be you know the market could just as well shift to the downside we, we're in between a high and a low i say that quite often we're in between this high that the market made yesterday the low that it made and we're now we're making minor structure breaks back to the upside okay so this is a situation to where you know you can look for shorts you can look for longs but um you know, I would probably be, it depends. It just depends on what we tap into. If we tap into an area of supply, uh, then I would be looking for possibly a short. But also, I'm keeping in mind, too, because we're breaking minor uh, areas of structure back to the upside, I could be looking for longs. So as long as we continue to make it higher highs and higher lows and breaking structure to the upside, I can look for pullbacks to go long is what I'm trying to say, okay? So that, in a nutshell, is what we look like here on the market on the uh, ES. I'm sorry, guys. I'm at, I'm at the NASDAQ. So I'm going to go over to the ES right quick because I was into a little trade on the ES um, it wasn't to a little trade here on the ES let me I don't know why that was off there um, going going long just back up to around the 73 area so hopefully I get filled here and uh, okay we just look at there okay okay we just got filled there on the ES um, I had that trade on was watching it and uh, we just got filled there so uh, let's look at the structure of the, of the ES right quick. Now it's a little bit different because we haven't really been doing too too much. Just been bullish the whole time, you know. Been bullish for the last uh, just last few weeks if you really look at it. Even in the last couple months, um, just making higher highs and higher lows to the upside. Uh, session after session, making new highs, pulls back, new highs, pulls back, new highs, pulls back, new highs, pulls back. Just making. So we are bullish. So the really the ultimately the only type of trades I would be looking to take on the ES would be longs right now. Made a high, higher low. High, we're between this high and this low. So right now I'd be looking just to take longs because the, the market hasn't really broken any areas of, of structure um on the low I'm assuming on the higher time frame to the downside. So we're still bullish. We're just pulling back, tapping into, you know, uh, a um prior low area where the market swung to the to the upside, made a high, higher low. Higher high, pulls back, pull back, retracement, go long, look for an opportunity, but take it on a lower time frame, okay? So as long as we're doing that in trend of the market and there's no uh, shift in the market back to the downside where it's taking out structure to the downside, uh, especially on the higher time frame, then just look for longs, okay? Stay in the direction of the higher time frame is what I always talk about, um, especially if you're a new trader, beginner trader. It doesn't even matter if you're, if you're a professional trader. It, it, when you're in line with the higher time frame chart and you're taking your trades on a lower time frame in confluence with that direction, what you, what, what's going on in the higher time frame, that makes the trade, um, it works. It just tends for the probability of the trade to work out more in your favor. All right. So you just saw I took a long trade there for three points on the, uh, on the ES. And sometimes that's all you really need, you know, three to five points on the three to five points on the ES a day, depending on how many contracts you trade. That's it, you know, um, so and it could be two points. I mean, depending on how many contracts you trade, maybe you trade five contracts, 10 contracts, get two points on the ES and you're done for today. All right. But this market is a little bit, it's, it's a thicker market, a lot more volume, but right now it's just, um, because of, you know, we're getting closer to the end of the year. Things are wrapping up holiday season. Um, just it's not there, you know, as much as you're going to see it on a thinner market like the, uh, the NASDAQ. So let's see. All right. So let's see what the market is trying to do 
in this area where we're at right now. I'm not sure if it's going to continue breaking higher here. Um, yeah, let's see. With a test supply zone here, we have an imbalance resting back at the zone. So I'm not sure if it's going to, um, but the market can push through this area. So I'm not sure what it's going to do in this area right now. Okay, if you look at the um, the lower time frame, we're still making new highs to the upside. So um, let's see what it's going to do. All right, the market was running to the upside here. Um, it's like I feel that imbalance over here. All right, 62, 63 area. So I'm not sure what it's going to do. It's rejecting from that area right now. That's a area of uh let's see what it was uh yeah that was a it was a, a it's a low probability supply area okay had the imbalance resting right there but like i talk about you know videos there's a possibility it can reject that area for sure okay um but you just have to scale down to your lower time frame look to see if we're getting rejection you know with the breaking structure to the downside things of that nature and uh try to trade it you know um if you get the rejection is what I'm trying to say. So we'll, we'll just take our time. And... All right, it looks like, it's, it looks like it's, it's not quite, it pushed this this area right here. So I have to be careful, be mindful of what it's trying to do. It could push a little bit lower down here to uh, maybe 50. So let me see here, 55. I'm waiting to see what it's going to do. Okay. Just waiting to see what it's going to do. Is it going to reject this area and push higher or is it going to, um, you know, break, break lower? We just tap that area of demand down here. I'm waiting to see. I'm going long. And I'm looking to take the take the market back up. I just hope it's ready to reject this area. So this trade I'm going to hold right here. This was a small demand area. Small demand area right here, but it tested it and it pushed right through it. Yeah, it sure did. Got a little bit of rejection from that area and then it pushed lower, testing this area right here. There's a possibility it can push a little lower, maybe test this imbalance within the zone right here. I'm gonna draw the zone out just to be mindful of myself. This area right here is a small imbalance within the zone. This is an untested area that it just tapped into. So all I'm saying is that it can maybe push a little lower. I'm noticing the rejection. I see the that bullish momentum that stepped back into the market with these, you know. That bullish hammer candle, this one, and then follow with another bullish hammer candle, ha cam uh, candle to the upside. So I'm looking for, I want to see it run up here and test the 72 area. So let's see if she does. <sighs> let's see what it does here. <clears throat> And so far, so good. I uh, just don't know how far it's going to run up to. So I'm just going to hold this trade here. This will be my, I hope I can get field here. This will be my last trade for today. Sorry, later than I normally want to trade. So, um, okay. 
let's see so they could break some area of structure here on the lower time frame and then pull back and then continue pushing higher so that i expect they possibly to do um but yeah let's see what it's going to do here like it could break this area right here structure at 63 and then pull back to this area so let's see Let's see. Forty three. Trying to hold it. I, I'm pretty sure it's going to pull back first. Just following the structure of the market, we can see. You know, it started again taking out these minor areas of structure on the, on the push to the upside here. Broke that major area of structure right there at 84, 85 area. You know, the 884 or 885 area right there. Okay. Um, we're just a few points away here. This is where you make a decision. Should, what should you do? Um, all this bullish momentum right here is like I want to just stay into it because, you know, you can see what's going on. This is on the lower time frame, the 12 range. But it could pull back here, you know. So I went ahead and took out um, at uh, 10 points. Um, had to stop the recording, guys. And I had it set at, came back and, well, I went ahead and took profit at 10 points. I had to jump off and answer a, a um, call. But anyways, I went ahead and, look, when any, anytime I get kind of, I got multiple things going on. So when I get um, other business activities or things that I need to respond to, uh, I get a phone call that I need to take care of. Um, uh, you know, I'll go ahead and jump out my trade because I don't want to be in the middle of a trade while I'm sitting here in conversation or something. So I took I took profit at, at 10 points. But we're still in that demand area uh, where we see, you know, we you see it at. So um, you got a nice bullish candle here on the higher time frame. So um, let's see. Yeah, what's the market going to actually do? Um, let's see. I mean, yeah, I, I think it's probably going to run up here and probably test. I'm sure 72, but right now I'm just going to stand down until I see something else unfold. Uh, so let's pick the 10, 10 points there. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Um, it could come back to this area right here reject and push higher so I may, may take a stab if I see something take place there to take it back up to the upside but it, I like I prefer for it you know kind of want to see it like um, pull back to this area right here so let's see what it does first pulls back to maybe around here around 48 or 46 47 area I may take a trade going long All right. So basically, you know, what happened is making, you know, structure to the upside, breaking, breaking areas of structure to the upside, pull back here, broke structure. And this is immediate, you know, pretty much a pullback, um, you know, right back to this zone here. So if it had like pushed up, pulled back and broke higher. OK. And it came back a little bit, didn't tap into the demand zone, broke up made a new high. When it came back to the area, then I, I, what I like to typically do is I want to see, you know, more rejection um, at the zone. So that's when I'll start to look for a demand setup on my higher assuming my lower time frame as well but this was a pullback it made a high higher low higher high and immediately pulled back here on the 60 range to this demand area so i went ahead and just looked for a area of demand within on the area of demand with on the lower time frame within the area of demand on the higher time frame if that makes sense okay so okay we're not we haven't quite tapped into that area 49.75 48.50 we're talking a point four or five ticks there and this thing can run to the upside so not sure yet so I'm not going to do anything I'm just going to stand down that may be my last trade I took I've taken what three trades one long into the overnight well not not in a session but I took one long into the overnight session um, and then the trade that I took on the ES was a long and then I just took a long here on the NASDAQ so I'm not trying to push it you know push down a little too much just a few trades a day 
um, this time of the year and just want to be safe. You know what I mean? Take things or take trades that, that make sense to me. That's the, uh, the biggest thing. So we'll see what happens here. I mean, it could actually fold and start to break structure to the downside here. In that case, you know, um, we would start to take out miners areas of structure back to the downside here. And, um, you could, you could look for, you know, opportunities to go short, but to be mindful, um, the higher probability or the trades that would make sense would be looking for longs because we're bullish to the upside and we definitely broke a major area of structure from yesterday's um, high. Okay. So we were breaking minor areas of structure as we were, you know, pushing higher today. Then we broke this major area of structure into yesterday's uh, trading session. So definitely bullish. Now, if we fold and start making lower lows and lower highs and breaking structure to the left hand side of the chart here, then, you know, I could start to look for, um, you know, shorts, but I definitely want to still keep in mind that we're still bullish because we're bullish within the session. Okay. So that's what I'm looking at as well. Kind of following the structure of the market where it's made a high, higher, low, high, higher, low, and then it even broke, you know, the sessional high over here from yesterday. So just following the structure of the market is all I'm doing. Okay, so um, that area in which we were looking at, that demand zone, it did reject there. It went all, it came up to 70 um, and pretty much uh, bounced in that area there uh, and rejected. I've said this time and time again in the past, and there's a few areas, and I talked about, I'm sure you guys have heard this, hitting pivot levels, okay? Not zones, but levels. Round numbers, half numbers. And what most people or traders don't talk about is the hitting, the hitting 40, 70 pivot areas. Okay, you may uh, a lot of professional traders know about them. Um, it's areas within the market that the market makers will, could, you know, like to reject at certain areas or they get it they test those levels, and then they could possibly react. So I'm not saying that it, it won't push through those areas, but just be mindful of those those areas sometimes. You know, when they when they hit those areas. Like 70, like it should have probably went up here and tested this this 72 area, right? And I would have looked for that, but it, it rejected right at 70, okay? So, you know, I've talked about in past videos, I've said it in several videos about those hidden pivot levels, 40 and 70, okay? So keep that in mind as well uh, when trading. Um, and and just know, you know, round numbers, trading around in round numbers or half numbers or at round numbers and half numbers, like I showed in a prior video, where was it at? This right here, this ellipse area right here, that was 16,800, okay? The market reacted there because I didn't look off to the left-hand side of the chart, but I automatically knew that that's a round number and the market could react there. This area right here, this was at 16,650, half number, the market reacted there. Also, like I said, the 40 and 70 pivot levels too are areas in which the market can react at, all right? so. It went up. It came back down here, tested and and and, um, and rejected at seventy and pushed lower on the lower time frame. Uh, if you went long on this is the zone off that sixty area, a sixty range chart right here. Not this red, not this green box, but I'm just marking off invisibly. Just picture it. It's right here in this area, right here. Okay, the market comes there. We're still within it. It rejects it. If you look for a demand setup on the lower time frame, like right here, and then it pulled back. When it pulled back right here, you could have went long. Okay. But be mindful of price action when you are trading uh, or taking longs back on the lower time frame of where it can go up to just as well. You know, keep the higher time frame in mind, but also look at your lower time frame as, as, as also. You got to look at both, okay, um, when trading. But anyways, uh, so the market's run, it ran lower now. I took a short entry somewhere in this area here. This was a little supply zone off of the lower time frame chart. And, you know, look, we broke minor area structure back to the downside here. So, but ultimately i'm still my mindset is still bullish because um uh, you know we were been making higher highs and higher lows in the session throughout the session broken major area structure over here from yesterday's session at high so i'm still long but i don't see any clean areas of uh demand below to where it possibly could react there now that we broke structure right here and below 838 and a half to the downside what could i possibly be looking for or looking at you know um uh, this area right here is an area of supply uh, that is not 100% tapped in or tested. Okay, it can test that area. It can push through it a little bit and test the imbalance with the M. Also, be mindful about because 
you know, this area right here, a lot of people had their, their, their eye on around the 650 area. I mean, excuse me, 852, 850 area, somewhere in there, 852 area today. Again, I'm talking about this. Low probability zones. A lot of times the market will push through them, okay? Even if there's an imbalance resting back at it, you still got to be cautious. I'm not saying it can't reject or bounce. It did react, right? It rejected when it got up there and tapped into that to, to that um that imbalance. But you have to understand and look below where could it possibly you know come down to and then you know reject from there and can continue pushing higher, which it did. You know, it re reacted around uh 866, okay. All right, after filling that imbalance there at 862, reacted, pushed higher, came back, and pushed even higher. So that's the reason why I prefer, in most instances, to trade around um, high probability untested zones. Okay, especially, like I said, I think it was in yesterday's video, when you have a high probability zone that's not tested, okay, that makes it high probability, right? Okay, also, if you have an imbalance at that zone as well, all right, there you go. That's a recipe right there for looking for a great trade setup. So your best opportunities are going to come at untested zones where the market hasn't tapped them yet, okay? So, um, you know, the market could come up here, like I said, at 848 and, um, you know, maybe want to push lower, all right? But I'm also, in my mind, I'm still thinking, I'm still, you know, have a bullish mindset because of the fact is this is just could be just a minor pullback to push higher, right? And we're just making, we're just breaking minor areas of structure right now. So, you know, uh, not a lot of uh, uh, activity today, even on the, the uh, well, on the NASDAQ, this is, this is the higher time frame. But normally we see a lot more of this already today. So, but either way, um, just, you know, trade it slow and be patient. I may look for one more setup here. Right now, my time, it is, what time is it? Oh, it's one o'clock Eastern time. So I maybe, I, I, it depends, you know, I may just wait it out and see if I can get into one more trade. Being that we're into the, to the afternoon session, it's Friday. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. All right. Okay, here's a trade right here. I was talking and I missed it. This is why I miss trades, guys, because I'm trying to give you guys information. Okay, so uh, this area right here, this was a demand zone. I'm mean, supply zone. I'm gonna mark it because it was a supply zone. I missed it. Right here on the lower time frame chart. All right, pulls back to it. I already know where they're gonna aim for. More than likely, it's gonna be right here. Why down here at this area here? Because this was a demand area right here. Demand. Okay. So the mark the market marches right back up to that supply area, rejects it, and I'm gonna aim for that area of demand below. This is the area they're bouncing from right now. It tapped into the tick. You see that? Right there at 806, tapped into the tick, and um, you know, it is what it is. So this was a supply area. We are breaking minor areas of structure back to the downside now. So you can look for lower, you can look for setups to go to go short, okay? This would have been a nice setup off the 12 range chart, is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so <clears throat> I mentioned this area up here. This is actually a supply area, so, and it's untested. Uh, it's like a couple of ticks there, uh, void gap in which the market can tap back into. So uh, we'll see. See what takes place. Again, structure wise, it has broken lower, taking out structure right here. But those are minor areas of structure in which is breaking down okay um so this could be a pullback to go short uh but ultimately overall you know it the the market is actually bullish today okay but we are breaking minor areas of structure back down to the um uh, to the downside all right so i'm going to show you two trades i just took i got them marked up on the chart um they happened so fast they were back to back two supply entry trades off the lower time frame but again the higher time frame we are you know, we're, we're bullish. We're just breaking structure back to the downside within this leg right here, okay? Um, so, anyways, we're, we're breaking minor areas of structure back to the downside. You can see that here. So, you can look for, for short opportunities, all right, um, to, to go short. Now, looking at the lower time frame, you see, I'll talk about short opportunities. I'm looking at my lower time frame. There was an opportunity on a pullback right here. This was a supply area on the lower time frame, okay? Took it for a quick scalp back down to here. So, it was... Uh, basically from 774 to down here to about four points, okay? Uh, make sure. Yeah, three, four, I mean, a four-point trade right there pretty much, okay? Then it taps into another area supply above it. Took the trade real quick, back down from 778. Uh, first contract at, out, out at 774 and a quarter, and the next one was out at 72 and a 
a quarter. Okay, so I just want to show you those two um, those two entries as well. Okay, and now the market. Let's take a look at it. Okay, it's starting to uh, starting to move higher here. Okay, so um, let's see. I'm into a short trade right here. Going short, get filled. Boom, back down in this area right here. Another supply area. Uh, off the lower time frame, I'll show it to you. These are back to back trades that I'm taking real quick. Momentum stepped in real quick in the market right here. Where's the supply area at? It's right here off the higher time frame. I mean, excuse me, off the lower time frame. All right, I'm following the direction of the higher time frame because we're breaking monetary area structure back down to the downside. So I'm looking for pullbacks to supply areas off the lower time frame to take, take shots to uh, go, go short. Okay, look, low. Uh, it made lower highs, pull back pretty deep here. Okay, nice retracement. Then broke structure to the downside. This here, supply area, supply area, supply area within this break of structure to the downside. Okay, so I'm looking for opportunities like that to do what? To go short. Okay, and the market runs back up to this uh, area here, uh, the supply area here. I'm looking below once it once it tapped into there to see where it could go to. Back down to the supply area. I mean, excuse me, excuse me, back down to this demand area right here. So I'm going to mark an arrow there. Uh, demand arrow uh, area was right here. It's actually going to run a little lower than that. You can test this, but fill that gap right there as well. So three back-to-back -back trades right there on the um, excuse me on the Nasdaq. So I'm just following the direction of the higher time frame. Notice that we're breaking minor areas of structure back to the downside, and I'm looking for supply setups on pullbacks. That's all it is. But that's all I want to share with you guys. A couple trades today, you know, three back to back here. I think all in all, I think it was five trades today and then one into the overnight session. So um, all three, I mean, all all five pretty much successful. Um, so I appreciate everyone tuning in today's session. If you're interested in joining the Discord, find the link down in the description portion of the video and uh, invite yourself in. Come over and join us on the daily, okay? Over, over on the Discord community, okay? We, as Traders come together on the trading floor, channel on the server, and we share our entries, okay? We share screenshots of our trades, if you get, you know, so it helps people to see how other people are trading and, and zones or levels from which other people are trading from. I trade supply and demand, okay? Uh, if you're interested in joining the Elite Membership, like I said, it's $6.99 a month. Click on the Join button. You'll see it right here on the, on the video somewhere next to the Share uh, and uh, the Like button and, and all the Subscribe, the uh, subscribe, all that good stuff. So, also, if you're not a current subscriber, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and click on the sub button now. Okay, you're missing, you miss an opportunity. Okay, to become, to to become educated. I'm not a teacher, but you can watch the videos and educate yourself. Lots of people that are part of this community have done so already. All right. If you don't believe me, come over and ask on the Discord community. I'm providing this stuff, pretty much giving it away for free. I'm just wanted to share what I know because there's no purpose of me appointing me being able or anyone to harbor information if, if it could better or improve someone else um in general their life okay so that's why i'm doing this okay guys i appreciate each and every one of you tuning in on the daily uh again make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already and make sure last but not least to click on that like button i'll see everyone next week into the trading session uh we are kind of wrapping up the year next week we're stepping into uh getting ready to step into the holidays for those that celebrate it so take care have a safe weekend, get rested up, and I'll see you next week.